terms of uh, your projections? Mm -hmm. Yes, so the government has indicated and has tabled proposals um, to support uh, local assembly of, um, of motor vehicles. Um, from remarks made by the Minister for Industrialization yesterday, um, the policy or proposed policy is anchored on uh, one, uh, commercial vehicles, uh, having no further importation of used commercial vehicles, on uh, passenger vehicles, uh, reducing the age limit yes. for imported vehicles from eight years to five years. That's for cars with an engine rating of uh, more than 1,500 cc. And importantly also the government itself, the national government, supporting local assembly by only buying vehicles that are locally assembled, which makes sense because uh, the government has an interest in ensuring that its citizens are gainfully employed in manufacturing and also that they are spending the revenue they collect from the same companies that are paying taxes. So I think the government is moving in the right uh, direction. What that means for local assemblers like Isuzu East Africa is then the plant that we've already invested in is now actually going to be fully utilized. And for us as a shareholder, then we have a better chance to get a return on the investment that uh, we have made. Okay. And it's a, it's a welcome move. I'm sure there'll be many other players joining in. Mm. And for us, uh, the more people who are assembling locally, I think the, the better uh, for each of us. So what's your overall assessment of our manufacturing sector and uh, what are the prospects like? So I think for uh, the manufacturing sector, speaking briefly, um, what we require from government is really the right policy moves. I think we are seeing that in the, in the, uh, the assembly of motor vehicles. We, are think we are seeing the right uh, uh, policy incentives we are being, being put into place. Um, I think one other area that we, we need to consider is just uh, government bureaucracy. Um, anyone looking to set up a plan today probably has to go through 50 different licenses and approvals. Uh, is there anything that we can do as a country to fast track the, the process? Because with every day that there is a delay, it means there is someone who will not get a job. There's a business owner who will not get a chance to supply goods and services. So it's really a question of how government can reduce uh, the times uh, to ensure that anyone who's looking to go into manufacturing setter, sector can do so quickly. Uh, but overall, I think we have the right environment uh, in, in Kenya. Uh, we can address the power issue by bringing in uh, a cheaper power. Um, and I think uh, generally, we, 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 I, I think we are confident about the manufacturing sector. All right. Yeah. And as we come to the tail end of this discussion, uh, Muremi, one of the unique aspects about Centum is your ability to diversify, which many companies have not been able to really strike a balance. Where should we put our money? Mm. What really informs this kind of strategy for a company of your size? At the same time, speak to us briefly about the Centum Foundation. Okay, sure. So on your first question, um, so to some extent we have introduced uh, and have run with a specialization in the sense that we have organized our business into three, the private equity, the real estate, and the marketable securities. Mm. And each of those portfolios is run by separate uh, teams. Um, so the real estate team focuses purely on uh, real estate, the marketable securities focuses purely on the marketable securities portfolio. Onto the private equity where we are invest across uh, several sectors. For us as investors, uh, we uh, look to back uh, proprietors and uh, business owners and managers who are, who are already successful and see where our capital can add value to what they are already doing. So we are not necessarily looking at ourselves at Centum uh, to go and become Coca-Cola uh, bottlers because mm. there are managers who can do coca-cola bottling far much better than uh, we could because yes. that's their core business because that's their core business for us we provide the capital mm. to support the expansion plan sure and that's across that, that and that's the case across uh, all the sectors that we invest in so for us primarily what we look for is the right companies the right management teams that uh, we can back uh, companies and people who have already proven themselves uh, successful in the market all right yeah I just want to get your parting shot, Murimi, as well. Mm. When you look at the young people 
and uh, of course you are also a very big uh, inspiration to the business community uh, having been one of the promising CEOs in the country as well as managing such a big organization at a fairly not an advanced age what what would you say makes you stand apart compared to other older CEOs mm -hmm. in the marketplace yes. um, so I would say the the world is rapidly changing um, it's uh, rapidly changing um, there's technological advancements um, the rate of change in across in any sector as well as the rate of growth uh, has been quite fast and that is true in the world and that is true in Kenya and in a sense, many of the skills that we had um, 10, 15, 20 years ago are not as relevant uh, today as they were then. So I think what makes a difference is ability to learn quickly um, and then apply and adapt uh, even faster. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that's what has made the difference for, for, for Centum, that we've been able to learn and we've been able to adapt quickly based on the changing market environments. Um, in a lot of the companies that we are invested in, we, one of the key areas that we're able to support them is in quick decision making. Uh, but that requires that you, are, you have a constant feel of what's going on and you can quickly learn and adapt. Um, I'll tie to your question earlier on the, on the Centum Foundation. So for us and the encouragement to young people, is really to invest in education, but in also in continuous learning. Uh, one of the things that we do as part of our social responsibility at Centum is we support a lot of um, uh, students from unfortunate uh, backgrounds uh, to be able to get a decent education. Uh, we've done that across, uh, in, uh, down in Vipingo, for instance, in Kilifi, we support uh, right now about 200 uh, secondary school-going students. Uh, in uh, Madhare, we completely uh, built a new school in the new, new uh, Madhare that supports about 1,200 kids. So for us, we see our responsibility as investing in the education of the young people. But then also that comes with a responsibility on their end to ensure that there is a con continuous learning because the world is constantly changing. The rate of change is coming much faster than All we right. saw it previously. Thank you so much. Well, we've been speaking there to Fred Murimi, the Managing Director for Centum Capital, just giving us the lowdown on what the company is up to, as well as some of the key projects that are in the pipeline. And, of course, a lot of investor participation expected in the coming months, even as this particular company looks towards growing its portfolios. Well, that's all the time we had for you here on the Trading Bell. But over and above that, we also want to take a look at the market analysis for this week. Well, time for us to take a look at Markets 101 for the day. Well, it's time for us to go down memory lane and take a look at our historical fact for this week. Well, that very engaging discussion brings us to the end of this week's episode of The Trading Bell. Of course, make a date with us every Friday on KTN News as we bring you what industry leaders have to say and what are the numbers looking like. Bye-bye from now. Have a lovely weekend ahead.